Welcome to another episode of the Rugged Medicine YouTube channel. In tonight's video, we're going to look at identifying an ST elevation myocardial infarction on a 12 lead. But this video is not about ECG interpretation, but rather about a quick way that you can identify in which region of the heart the myocardial infarction has taken place. So I'm going to be teaching you a very quick and dirty way of identifying elevation in which lead is responsible for which region that is easily remembered and therefore very well suited for when you can't remember any other method in order to identify what elevation means in a particular lead. So let's get going. So the different regions and leads. So the most common ones that are spoken about will be septal, anterior, lateral and the inferior region of the heart. Those are the four key areas. Now, of course, the posterior region is also one that is commonly mentioned. However, in order to identify a posterior MI or a posterior myocardial infarction, you need to move leads around and then um, use that information to identify whether it is a posterior AMI or not. So we're only gonna focus on septal, anterior, lateral and inferior today. Now, if you're using a 12 lead ECG, the views or the leads that you have available are the precordial leads. So V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. You have your constructed leads, AVR, AVL, and AVF. And then of course, leads one, two, and three. Now, when you're looking for elevation on a 12 lead ECG, you have multiple different ways. So one of the common ways is auto interpretation software, which means monitors like LifePack 15 and Zoll product and all the other manufacturers nearly all provide some sort of auto interpretation. However, the accuracy is often questionable because the software from my experience only works well when the patient is perfectly still. It's a 100% um, interference and undisturbed ECG, which of course is often not possible in the settings that we are in, in the back of a vehicle, in a um, patient that is not 100% cooperative because obviously it is likely to be an emergency when we're suspecting an AMI. So therefore it is often not accurate even in perfect situations, but even less accurate when it is disturbed. You could simply just remember which region is represented by which lead. So therefore just learn, oh, V1 is this area, V2, lead two, etc. But that is quite a hard way because that is pure memorization. You could use a quick reference card. So you get these pocket sized little reference cards that will simply list all the leads with different colors. And then you can refer to that and go, okay, elevations in this combination mean that region, that combination meets that, for example but that requires you to have the reference card. You do get um, these clear overlay sheets. So they're essentially the size of a 12 lead ECG printout. They are a see-through piece of plastic and printed onto that is um, the area of the heart. So if you've got a LifePak 15 or a Zoll X series, you would buy a little plastic sheet that is suitably printed for the region layout of that model monitor. You stick it over the printout ECG and then it will tell you which region. However, if you are using different types of monitors or you don't have it with you, that may either be impractical or you might just not have one for that model, then you have to try and transfer it over. That is just not practical either. Or you could use a very simple acronym or a system to remember the lead and region that each one is associated with. Now, of course, that is not as accurate as the other four methods or three if we leave auto interpretation out but this is the absolute simplest and quickest way or the quick and dirty way so to speak to remember certain regions and that is based on the acronym known as sally s a l and i now you may remember that we spoke about four regions earlier septal anterior lateral and inferior and therefore sally represents this so s stands for septal so if it is in the septal region it's and there's elevation in lead V1, V2, that is the septal region. <clears throat> elevation in the anterior region, A, anterior, V3 and V4 are the leads. If there's elevation there, that's the anterior region. For the lateral region, it is V5, V6, 1 and AVL. And of course, for inferior, it's all the remaining ones, which is 2, 3 and AVF. 
So what you can see here is that we've covered the precordial leads, V1 to V6, the constructed leads, and the remaining three leads. So feel free to pause the video here to make sure that you can take a photo of it, write it down, copy it, whichever way you do, and then um, unpause it and watch the explanation and the example on the next slide. So keeping the Sully model in mind that we just had on the previous slide in the previous image, Let's assume there's ST elevation in lead V3 and V4. Now, using the SALI acronym, that septal is V1, V2, um, anterior is V3, V4, laterals V5 and 6, 1 and AVL, and inferiors 2, 3 and AVF, we know that V3 and V4 elevation is an anterior AMI. If it is V5, V6, 1, and AVL, that's a lateral AMI, because that lines up with the L on the SALI acronym. And if we had both of those together, so V3, V4, V5, V6, 1, and AVL, you would have an anterolateral AMI. So it is on the side as well as on the top, so anterior or on the front section. So anterolateral AMI for V3, V4, V5, and 6, 1 and AVL. <clears throat> if you had lead 2, lead 3 and AVF, looking back at the SALI acronym from the previous slide, 2, 3 and AVF is for under the I and therefore that is stands for inferior AMI. Now all of these you can combine in various ways. So enterolateral, of course, is the A and the L combined. Then here you have enteroseptal, so V1, V2, and then of course, um, um, anterior, so V3 and V4. So V1 through V4 is an enteroseptal AMI, V3, V4, V5, V6, lead 1 and AVL is um, an enterolateral AMI. Now you can build all of those combinations together to use the SALI acronym in order to get a rough and quick interpretation of where the AMI is taking place and this is in case you don't have any of the other methods available. Now it is important to remember that this is not as accurate as other methods so as there's always discussions around ECG and ECG interpretation, in a lot of cases you might find that a detailed look would reveal that it is the region you just identified plus something else, for example, or another reason plus the area region plus the area you identified. That is perfectly fine. This is not the detailed cardiologist approved version to get absolute every detail out of the ST elevation interpretation on the ECG. This is the quick and dirty 3 a.m. Um, just got woken up, got handed an ECG, and I'm trying to figure out what it is. So remember the SALI acronym, go back to the previous slide to review it, and then this will help you out. I tend to write it onto the back of an ECG quickly if I can't remember it in my head, or I just write it down on my notepad or on a scrap piece of paper and then use it to mark the leads that are elevated. Now, please remember, this is not my invention or my concept. This is a concept I was originally taught probably about 14 or 15 years ago, and it as is actually featured in several publications. The one that um, I found it in was the Critical Care Transport book by the American College of Emergency Physicians in the US. I'm sure it is in various other books as well, but this is one that I own that I've actually found it in. I hope you found this method helpful. If you would like to see more videos of this kind or of any specific questions, please put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them all. Thank you very much for watching everybody and I'll see you for the next one.